Welcome to online worship at the Mayville and Campbellsport United Methodist Churches. My name is Steve Delano, and we're so glad that you have joined us for worship today. In my message a little later, we will explore the Ascension story as told in the Gospel of Luke. Please join me in prayer. Lord of amazing visions, prepare our hearts and our spirits this day to to receive your glad tidings of an advocate. Help make us ready to be your disciples in all that we do, say, and think. For we ask this in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. This hymn was written by Charles Wesley. Let us sing.
Our New Testament reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from the, on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The verses that we just read from the Gospel of Luke were the final verses in that book. The author of this synoptic gospel was a companion of the Apostle Paul throughout Paul's missionary journeys, including the Apostle's imprisonment and death in Rome. Luke was most likely a physician, a well-educated man, most likely a Gentile, not a Jew, the gospel was specifically written for someone named Theophilus. Theophilus was possibly a Roman official or a wealthy person of high position. He was also, also most likely Luke's patron and the publisher of this book. He was the person responsible for seeing that Luke's writings were copied and distributed. The purpose of Luke's gospel was to strengthen the faith of all believers and to answer the attacks of non-believers. He wanted to show that the place of the Gentile Christian in God's kingdom is based on the teaching of Jesus. And he wanted to commend the preaching of the good news to the whole world. Today we celebrate the ascension of the Lord. Jesus' ascension to heaven to be with God. We affirm this in our Christian creeds when we say that Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father. In Luke 24, 52, we read that the first act of the disciples was to worship Jesus after he was taken away to heaven. These followers of Christ, of Christ, all pious Jews, know that God alone is to be worshipped. Yet now, it is no longer possible to talk about God without talking about Jesus. Our lens for thinking about God must always include a crucified, risen, and living Christ. On some level, we imagine God to be perfect. Perfect in the sense that God is beyond all limitations of time and space. God is unchanging and all-powerful. God is majestic and sovereign and eternal. However, this view of God is incomplete. The God now being worshipped by the disciples in our passage is also one who knows loneliness, betrayal, rejection, thirst, and even death. The ascension of Jesus into heaven alters our picture of God. We can no longer define God in a way that leaves God completely detached from human experience. The ascended Jesus, who sits at God's right hand, reveals a God who is vulnerable and even approachable. When we turn to God in times of distress, 
or temptation. We're not addressing a deity that is aloof and unfamiliar with our struggles. God knows our trials intimately and not only comforts us by identifying with our pain, God also assures us that affliction will not have the final word because it, because it is the risen and ascended Christ who intercedes for us and nothing can separate us from his love. What does the ascension of the Lord mean for us on a personal level? It means that our almighty, all-powerful God is with us. God came to us in the person of Jesus Christ to teach us, to minister to us, to forgive us, to love us, to give us hope, and to show us mercy. When Jesus ascended to heaven, he did not abandon us. As he promised, he sent the Holy Spirit to us to renew us each day. This past week, we experienced highs and lows, joys and sorrows, just like most weeks. Some of our experiences were extremely painful. Some were life-changing. We have congregants who lost loved ones and friends this week. And we have congregants who have great hope for anticipated births. We have congregants with challenging health issues, and we have those who dance and play sports with ease and confidence. We have congregants that face relationship issues while others seem to have little or no conflict. We know that God's plans were fulfilled through Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. Yet we don't necessarily know or understand God's plan for our lives. We may have difficulty understanding why some things happen, why someone dies, why someone struggles with their health, or why relationships can be so difficult. Yet through our trials and tribulations and within our hopes and dreams, the Holy Spirit is with us, just as the Spirit was sent to Jesus' followers 2,000 years ago. We have faith. We have trust in God. We cling to our faith and our trust in God. I know that alone I am inadequate. Yet I believe that with God's help through the Holy Spirit, I am not alone that I am called to serve you in ways that are not possible without the Holy Spirit. I know that I am weak, however, with God's help, I am strengthened. Friends, we rely on and depend on God. The Holy Spirit works in and through us, and still Jesus is present with us. He is present when two or more are gathered in his name. He is present when a baby is born in the world, and he is present when we say, good, say goodbye to loved ones as they pass from this life to the next. He is present in the rising of the sun each morning and in the setting each evening. He is present in the blossoming of trees and flowers that surround us. And he'll be present when the leaves dry up and fall from the trees and the grass turns brown and the snow begins to fall. He is present in every feeling of love and every action of love. He is present in the breaking of bread and the pouring of wine. He's present in the great crowd of witnesses that surrounds us all. Jesus is with us every day, in every way. Friends, please pray with me. Almighty God, your son Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus lived among us in the flesh so that we might know the way and the truth and the life. Open our hearts and souls to receive the Holy Spirit anew each day so that we might serve you as you intend. 
Amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Go back to Jerusalem and wait, Jesus said to his disciples. Lord, we are not good at waiting for anything. We want to know what to do right now, right here. We want the plan all laid out for us so that we can project the end results. We have some real control issues to overcome, Lord. Take our spirits and release the need for control for them. Help us place our trust, our total trust, in your abiding love and presence. Give us patience and persistence in our ministries and mission. We have loved ones and friends whose lives are in need of your healing, mercy, and comfort. Remind us that we also stand in need of those same mercies. Give us courage to accept your love and strength to witness to your love in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, thank you for worshiping with us today. Please receive the benediction. Lord of love and light, you have called us to this place and have fed us with your loving spirit. Believe in the love and power of Christ who taught you how to be faithful and joyful disciples. Rejoice and believe in him who came that you may have abundant life. Now send us on our way in joyful service and peace in your world. Amen. Amen.